What's up, everybody? Ian Reed Lord is finally back from Kineticon 2011, and I am here with this video to recap everything that happened at Kineticon 2011. A lot of stuff happened. I took a lot of video footage. All, all of it's up on YouTube. And I guess I can use this video to also explain some of the things that I did not catch on footage. And I'll go into more detail about that. But first, let's go over what exactly happened when I first came to the event. So, basically, this uh, yesterday uh, morning, my dad and I woke up at about 6.30, I'd say. And we left the house here, this, or my summer house, as more people know, as more people know it as. And we left the house, and it took us about three hours to get to the Hartford Convention Center. So we got there about at 10 o'clock, I'd say 10 o'clock or 10.30 we got to the convention center. And we came in. And actually, the GPS was giving us some trouble when we came in. It was kind of, kind of funny. And <laughs> I actually tried to catch some of it on footage. My dad was getting really mad at the fucking GPS. He threw it. But I didn't get that on footage. I just got the aftermath of his, of his anger towards the uh, GPS. So we came in. We parked our car in the garage. And after that, we, you know, went in. We signed in. And already there were like a thousand people in costumes. Like even in the morning when it was wicked early, there were a lot of people there. So we signed in and we got this book. Well, actually, I got this book. They only give you one book per person if you're with somebody. So, all right. So right here, uh, I don't know how far I zoomed the camera, but right here you have the Kineticon 2011 guide for all of the events. There's really not much. It's just a freaking picture of a anime woman and a stupid husky. Uh, and then I have the schedule right here, which I probably don't need anymore. This was the schedule of all the events. They give it to all the people that sign up or are or already signed up at an earlier date. So once we got all that, we went into the gaming area first. And it was, you know, it was kind of surprising, but... The gaming area was actually very, very small compared to some of the other things. And the only reason I say that is because video gaming is, has really come a long way. And it's really a big thing. So I don't really understand why they didn't put more emphasis on the video gaming at this tournament. You know, for whatever reason, I don't really know what the reasons are. Maybe they wanted more anime stuff. Maybe they were more focused on the costumes and the cosplay and all that stuff. But it's, you know, not really a big deal. But... You know, they did have tournaments for, like, Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Halo 3, Halo Reach. Then they had all of the, all of the fighting games. They had Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. They had Marvel vs. Capcom 3. They had Mortal Kombat 9 or whatever it is. So they had a bunch of fighting games there, too. And then they had some fun games like the Kinect, the PlayStation Move. There were some PC games like StarCraft, Fantasy Universe, something like that. And then there were... Some old style games, there was like the Sega, the old Sega, there was some game on there. <laughs> it wasn't even working, some some kid like freaking broke it and I tried playing it, it didn't even work, so it was kind of a waste of time, but... You know, they did have a couple of tables reserved for gaming, but it was all through the LAN switch, so it was all local play, so like in a Halo match you would have like, you know, five people just killing each other with infinite ammo over and over again. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because... All of the kids, I guess, were under the impression that I had never played Halo in my life. So, like, all these little kids were like, Oh, let me show you how to play Halo. I'm like, dude, I've been playing this game since frickin' September. And then they made the mistake of facing me, and I frickin' whooped their asses. But <laughs> let's not talk about that. So after I checked, after I checked out the uh, gaming area, I went to... I think I went upstairs went upstairs to, the, they had a section reserved for people trying to sell stuff. They had, I took footage of this, they had a whole bunch of stuff that was, oh, sorry about that, yeah. I've told people before that I have like an air humidifier down here. This is, you know, all sorts of crap down here, so. I apologize, I kind of came on randomly. Anyways, they had a lot of stuff 
upstairs, people were selling a lot of crap upstairs. They had, you know, comic books, tattoos, they had anime posters, they had, like, freaking anime porn. It was like, ugh. I don't think they had anime porn, but, like, the freaking people weren't even covered. It was, like, nasty. It's like, it's like 80-year-old dudes, like, 80-year-old fat dudes freaking, freaking jerking off to these freaking posters of anime women. It's freaking ridiculous, but anyways. So they did have a lot of cool stuff upstairs. I didn't buy any of it because I really didn't need any of it. Like, I know Phil bought a couple of t-shirts. He bought some... He bought the mystery bag. I was tempted to buy the mystery bag. The mystery bag was something that they offered next to the to the video games. That side did not open up until about 11 o'clock, and it was... They were selling, like, larger items. Like, there was a, there was a place where they were selling, like, samurai swords and, like, little daggers and weapons. Like, all, all like old age medieval stuff and it was really like almost scary because you see these guys like flipping swords around and pretending to slice the air it's like all right buddy you know just calm down a minute it's just a little too real for me if, if you want my opinion on that but there were some cool things you know they had like this little japanese station for anime and stuff but so those were some of the things where, the, where they sold stuff. And they also sold, like, trading cards. They sold Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Magic the Gathering. They sold... What else did they sell? They sold, like, little, like, army guys, like, figurines. And, you know, World of Warcraft figures. I can't even name the number of games. Like, Dragons games, like, something in Dragons. I don't even know. They had so many, like, little games that pe people could play. And those games were all over the place. They had events in different rooms, upstairs and downstairs, so it was really, really neat. It was a neat display that they had, but I'm not necessarily interested in that kind of stuff. You know, playing video games is a hobby, so, you know, and I'm not really hardcore with video games. I just play them to play them. The only thing I've really done hardcore with video games is my channel, as everyone can obviously see, so... So one thing that I did that I did not catch on footage is I went to a publisher's meeting, and this publisher meeting was, basically there were three people. There was this guy in his 60s who was this fat dude with a freaking gray beard, and there was this young lady, and then there was this British dude. So the three of them were at this, almost like a panel upstairs, and they were doing like a question and answer session. So. There were a couple of people in the room, and we were all sitting down, and we were listening to their stories about how they got started writing novels, writing books, and all that stuff. And basically, my dad and I, we sat down and listened to them say their stories. Then there was a period where we could ask questions, and my dad asked a question. He asked how self-publishing has changed the publishing industry, because as you know, my book later this year in the fall is going to be self-published so I have to do all the marketing, all the advertising, you know, I have to spread the word and I have to do the cover art for it, I have to do everything for it. So, you know, my dad wanted to understand a little bit more about it and, you know, the answers they gave were kind of, kind of shitty, in my opinion. They were kind of like, well, I don't really understand the question, or they said, they were like, well, well, I forget, what did the British dude say? He's like, well, I'm not really sure that that, that, uh, you know, the market's not really good online, you know, it's better to sell it in public, and, you know, it's not, you know, I think the typical publishing business is a better fit. Something like that, I don't even know, I'm trying to freaking impersonate him, but... <laughs> so it was okay, but after we, after my dad asked the question, we pretty much left, because they were, all three of them were idiots, but, you know, they did give me some good advice, but, you know, they didn't really know what they were talking about, and they weren't really famous. I mean, really, they were not like J.K. Rowling by any means, so they were not popular authors. They were just there to be there, so. That was that, and then what did we do after that? I think we went to see uh, Jeopardy, like a comedic Jeopardy. They had a whole bunch of, like, characters from TV shows and anime stuff. Like, they had someone from, like, Arkham Asylum and... What, what else did they have? Like, someone from, like, Assassin's Creed, I think? Like, they had all, like, these famous, like, game characters, movie characters, like, playing this game of Jeopardy. And all the questions were geared towards movies, TV shows that these people would know. So we sat in the back and watched it for about four minutes. I actually took footage of it, and it was kind of... Uh, it was kind of weird. Like, the guy, like, the guy who was running the whole thing was trying to be funny. 
he was trying to make jokes that only people who watch these shows and stuff would know, and it was kind of lame, <laughs> to be quite honest, but... <clears throat> Whatever, you know, my dad and I were actually kind of ragging on it, so you can check that footage out if you want to see what we said. And then after that, we kind of just walked around. I was trying to find Phil and John Rambo and, the, and his other friend, who's, whose name is also John. I was, we were trying to find them. But little did I realize that he had stayed at his Marriott Hotel for a good portion of the morning, and then he left the hotel to go out into the city and get some lunch and get some souvenirs, and then he came back at about, I think it was about 1.30, that was when I met him. He met me, He was, I saw him coming in to the video gaming section, and that's where I met him, that's where I have the video of me shaking hands and introducing myself, that's when my father came over and introduced himself, so... That was when he came, so... It was funny, they actually apologized. I told them that I was walking around trying to find, like, nobody practically, and they apologized that they kind of wasted my time because I, I wasn't able to view their video explaining what their plans were because there's no internet access at the convention you know it was funny i actually found like this fbi surveillance internet connection when i was talking to to the two johns it was kind of funny so so when i met phil uh he went over he went over and signed up for the super street fighter 4 arcade edition he brought his custom joystick i chose not to sign up for anything all i did was you know, I just hung around and played casual matches with people. And I went over, when he was playing his online matches, or not online matches, his tournament matches, I actually started filming some of his matches because John Rambo was right behind him filming for Phil's channel. So I was doing the same thing right next to him. And I started, I, I think I missed the first round because I was playing with some people, but the second round I started filming, and then I got the third and fourth round, and he lost the fourth round, so he was in the loser's column. So basically, in order for him to regain like his position, he had to beat every single person that he lost to, and beat the person that he lost to. So basically, he has to beat everybody all over again in order to win. And the prize was a $50 gift card to GameStop, which... I don't know, it was okay, we were talking that it's only like, you know, $10 short of a video game, but... So, oh, one big thing that happened, um, I'm sure every single DSP fan is going to be jealous that I did this, but basically when Phil started up his, the losers column, basically when he lost there was some downtime and they were just sitting around, and for some reason, John Rambo and the other John just took off. Like, I don't know where they went, they just left. They left the video gaming thing entirely. And Phil was called up to start his match, and Phil's like, where the hell's John Rambo? He has to film this. And I was there, I'm like, I have no idea where they went, they didn't tell me. So Phil asked me if I could film his match, and he said that he didn't want to pressure me into it, and I said, you know, it's fine, I'll film the match. You know, he has the same camera as me, so I was fine holding his camera and doing all that, and I was actually able to film his match that he did for the first loser column against the guy named Eric, and it was actually really cool. That footage is now on his on his Street Fighter channel, his uh, DSP Street Fighter channel. So I actually favored the video when I found it. It's in my, my top favorites right now if you want to check it out, and it was funny. I, I anticipated that people were going to hate me for you know, commentating, because obviously most of DSP's fans don't know who I am, because he has over 80,000 people who follow him, and you know, I am friends with some of them, and some of them do follow my channel as well as Phil's, but not every single one of his fans follow my channel. I only have like about 160 subscribers, and that's nowhere close to how many Phil has. So, obviously I knew that a lot of his fans wouldn't know who I was, so I kind of tried to make it a little bit funny, I tried to make it interesting for the people, I said some funny things. I told people not to get mad at me because I was taking this stuff. So I guess it was a good introduction to show people who I was because, you know, I am, you know, kind of big out there. I don't know, I guess, according to some people who have told me that I am. But So yeah, it was very interesting. So I'm sure a lot of people are jealous, like, oh, how did you get to hold this camera that he uses all the playthroughs for? And you got to film his match and you were in it and on. So I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of freaking comments like that. I already have. I've gotten some comments. But some... I think for the most part, people have been leaving, you know, pleasant comments. They were actually, you know, grateful that I did that because 
let me let me say this. If I hadn't filmed that match, it would not exist. You would not see that round of footage if I hadn't filmed it. You would not see Phil facing that Eric kid. Because John Rambo and the other John, I think they came when I was finished filming. When I had finished filming that map or that match, the five minute match, they had just showed up. So you know, that would not have existed if I hadn't opted to film the match. So, you know, I'm sure DSP should be thanking me. I was hoping he was going to mention me in the video, like, saying, like, a special thanks to the Airy Lord, but I think he was just trying to upload the videos as quick as possible, and the internet connection at the hotel was kind of shitty, he was telling me, so. Oh, I forgot this. I forgot this right here. As everyone knows, in my, uh, in my video showing all the stuff that I was going to be bringing to the Kineticon, I brought Halo 3 ODST, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. As you can see, Dark Side Phil did sign it, and I don't know if you can see that right there. It's a little dark, but it says, worst game ever, <laughs> and it's underlined it as three exclamation points. So he wasn't mad when I showed it to him. Like, I showed it to him, and I told him it was a joke, and he, he kind of laughed. He laughed out loud a little bit, and I actually told him that I was so mad at the game that I stabbed it. I don't know if you can see this, but there's... I stabbed the... Oh, wait, where the fuck is the camera? Right there, there it is. I... Uh, no, you can't see that. Maybe... Eh, nah, no, no, fuck. Forget it. Ugh. But anyways, I stabbed the case with a pair of scissors, and he looked at it, and he was in tears laughing. It was so funny. I didn't catch that on footage, but I did have him sign it on the side, so I'm glad I have... A permanent copy of Halo 3 ODST, I don't think I'll ever sign this, or I'll, I don't think I'll ever sell this game, I guess, now that I have his signature on the game box. I, I guess I'll just keep the game box, you know, I guess there's really no reason to sell the game, but... What the fuck? I don't have the multiplayer disc in here. Whatever. I don't even play Halo 3 anyways. Uh, so that's it, really. Um... So that the only complaint I could possibly have about the event is that there wasn't much video gaming stuff. I really wish they had put more of an emphasis on it, especially if GameSpot is sponsoring this. You know, you would have thought that they would have, you know, had more booths, they would have had more tournaments and people. Like, at the Too Many Games convention, you had the angry video game nerd who showed up. You had more people who are widely known on YouTube show up. And the only reason that Phil showed up is because he's local to the area, so that makes sense. So, all right. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and this is basically almost like an introduction video for a lot of my new fans, my new subscribers. Um, basically, I do playthroughs, or they're called Let's Plays. I don't really like to call them Let's Plays, but they're like playthroughs. I try to do the major games. I don't really play minor games. I just play games that I think would be fun to play, and I do them. I play them with live commentary on my camera. And then I review them as soon as I'm finished playing with them and give you an honest review if I thought the game was good or if it sucked. So, that's that. And if you have any more questions, feel free to send me them. Just in a message or whatever. And, yeah. So I'm looking forward to Phil's footage. That's kind of the, the rest of the footage he has to upload for Kineticon. I'm really hoping that he shows people the summary of my chapter I gave him. I gave him a summary of my book for him and John Rambo, and I hope that he, I don't know, talks about it a little bit in his footage or his recap footage or whatever, so, yeah, that's it, um, I'm glad you guys have been sticking in with me for a long time, and I know this was a very fun event, but now that that's over, I guess it's time to, I don't know, just hang out for the rest of the summer. The only thing I can see coming up is the Fallout New Vegas Old World Blues DLC, that's what really... Really the only thing that I can foresee in the future, like a future playthrough I might do. So that's really it. And stay tuned, because I'm probably going to be getting a lot, a lot more views from all of the footage I put up from Kineticon, because people have been eating that shit up.